The Upper Chihuahuan Desert in far west Texas can be a rugged, empty, unforgiving landscape. Just the thing that inspires Scott Martin. Ever since he found his first camera under the Christmas tree at the age of 12, Scott has wandered to the far corners of the continent, searching for the relics and ruins of forgotten places. this guy because there's nothing around you know there's no power lines this guy's a lone survivor only thing is with almost no daylight left it might seem Scott is running late when actually he's here a little early it's really nice when the Sun goes down everyone else goes to bed you know and you get the whole place to yourself You have to be really patient. Um, it's really slow work. It's really meditative. Shooting at night is really exciting because you can choose to put light where you want it. So you can bring things out of the darkness or let things recede into the darkness. And while the rest of the world is asleep, Scott Martin spends all night waving, dancing, and dodging for one photograph. You see the camera shutter is locked open, recording this odd ritual among the ruins. When you are engaged with your creative process and making an image at night, it's totally exhilarating. You know, it's better than coffee, it's better than no-dos. If you're hungry, you forget about it. And it's really the best thing in the world. Sometimes the sun comes up and it's, it's pretty sad, you know? It's like the night's over, you know? You've, there are no more images you can make. Back in his studio in San Antonio, Scott prints a single photo that took hours to produce. That looks pretty good. So let's look at a few others. Okay. You know, I'm crazy about Ocotillo. This piece is called Break, and this is a, a one minute exposure at a railroad crossing just outside of Marfa, Texas. Um, and then this is a three and a half hour exposure in Death Valley. This is something I found along the Trilingua School Road mm -hmm. in Trilingua, Texas, just outside the, the National Park. And then I love what people do in the desert. You know, I have no idea what somebody was thinking putting a phone a booth. Phone booth. Uh, let's see. Mm, Ocotillo. Your favorite. Yeah, this one was almost 20 feet tall and it was really old and it stood really still for me for a one hour exposure. I mean, it, it would have to. Yeah. <laughs> a few years back, my friend Lance Kiming and I put together a little book about night photography, Finding Your Way in the Dark. And it's part how-to with a bunch of techniques and suggestions and thoughts on lighting and the like. You know, we're trying to help people find their way in the dark, as they say. Literally. Yeah. So chapter one, if you have a problem staying awake at night, this is not for you? All right. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, let's do something with this yucca. We've got the Milky Way right above it. Let's see here. Uh, I think if we get down really low. There's something about a photograph that if I feel like I've really spent a lot of time and made it, mm -hmm. that seems a lot more satisfying to me. So, you know, these photographs feel like something I've made as opposed to taken. Yeah. Oh man, that is so cool. Okay. Scott says the desert is at its best when you can't see anything at all. It's only at night when there's a landscape of stars in the sky. And with careful brush strokes of light, Scott Martin is changing the way we see in the dark. So what's your favorite image? Um, what's my favorite image? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> what's my favorite image? Like one image, pick it out? I think I'm still looking for the favorite image. Will you ever find that image? I don't know if I'll ever find that favorite image, but you know, chances are it's somewhere in a desert waiting for me in the middle of the night. <laughs>